Hello, welcome to this video on curve sketching. We're going to be able to know exactly how a curve looks just by looking at the algebra and the calculus um, behind the scenes. No calculators. All right, let's discuss the process. It starts with algebra. Pre-calculus, you're going to be able to look at what is the function's domain? Does it have any symmetry with respect to the y-axis or the origin? Um, does it have any asymptotes? In this video, we'll look at asymptotes in detail. And then um, beyond that, though, that's where you start with the calculus. You take the first derivative, you take the second derivative, and that gives you all the information you need about where the function is increasing at, where it's decreasing at. You'll be, be able to identify the behavior at the critical numbers or critical points. Is it a local min or a local max using the first derivative test? You'll take the second derivative. You'll be able to find all the inflection points. You'll be able to know the shape of the graph. Is it concave up or is it concave down? And then you'll be able to take these separate pieces of information and synthesize them together and be able to know exactly how the graph looks. Um, we'll be able to um, put, put it all together and also plot points, some important points where you have these this information coming up about the critical points, the inflection points. We'll plot those and then it'll be just a matter of connecting the dots with the correct kind of shape. A concave down decreasing function looks a certain way. It looks like the right hand side of a frowny face. And so we'll use all that information and put it all together. In this video, I want to look at the pre-calculus concept. Uh, what um, are the ways to find the asymptote. There's three actual asymptotes, not just two. First up is a vertical asymptote. Generally, it's a place where your denominator is equal to zero. If your denominator is something that's not constant, it's a function, you want to set it equal to zero and find that x value. Places where your function is undefined at. Or it could be just some place where you're, you know, your 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 limit is infinity or minus infinity, like it is for like for natural log of x at the y-axis. It dives down to minus infinity. Um, you gotta make sure though that if you have a place where your derivative is equal to, I mean your denominator is equal to zero, you gotta make sure that your numerator is not also equal to zero. Okay. Uh, next up is horizontal asymptotes. Now these happen when you look at the limit. You'll be looking at the limit as x goes to infinity or minus infinity. And if that limit is a finite constant, then y equals that constant is your asymptote. That's horizontal. All right. We'll be dealing with functions that are mostly rational functions, a polynomial divided by another polynomial. So you can always know for those types of functions whether you have a horizontal asymptote or not, because the, the limit at infinity will be equal to a constant when the degree of the numerator equals the degree of the denominator that constant will be the ratio of the coefficients on those highest degree terms. Okay, there is a third type of asymptote. It's called a slant asymptote, or oblique, if you prefer that word. Okay, it's y equals mx plus b asymptote. And so you take this function who um, is a fraction and you divide the bottom into the top. And if it can be written, if the quotient can be written as mx plus b, plus some fraction who's going to go to zero, then you could actually say then that y equals mx plus b is your hors, I mean your slant asymptote. All right, now for our functions, we'll be dealing with these polynomial divided by polynomial, these rational functions. You can know automatically whether you have a slant asymptote if the degree of the numerator is one more than the degree of the denominator. It's impossible then for these types of functions to have both horizontal and a slant asymptote because of the degree. Um, degree has to equal for horizontal and for slant, degree of the numerator has to be one more than the degree of the denominator. It's your job to long divide the bottom into the top. Uh, unless the bottom is a, um, a linear, then you can use the shortcut to the long division, which is synthetic division. Let's take a look at a quick example. We have this rational function I'm going to look at all possible types of asymptotes. First up, vertical asymptote. Denominator could be equal to zero. X equals negative five. Check the numerator. Nah, it won't be equal to zero when you have a negative five. Um, you'll have uh, the positive term when you square that. That'll get you to 50. And then the other part will be negative. It'll come down from 50, but it won't be um, able to come down enough to end up uh, as zero. So negative five is x equals negative 5 is a vertical asymptote for this particular function. 
Okay, next up, we have to look at a horizontal asymptote. But the degree of the numerator is one more than the degree of the denominator. That limit's gonna be either infinity or minus infinity. In this case, it's gonna be equal to infinity. And so, we don't have a horizontal asymptote. Last type, slant asymptote. And we have that situation where the degree of the numerator is one more than the degree of the denominator. So we know we have one. To find out what it is, we long divide the bottom into the top. Okay? Uh, or we can use synthetic division. This is x plus 5 down below as a factor. So we put a minus 5. We put the, uh, the terms, the coefficients of the polynomial we're dividing into. We bring down the first term. We, anytime we get something below the line, we multiply by our root, um, negative 5. It's not the actual root. It was our dividend. It's what we're dividing by. And that ends up as negative 10. Add vertically, we get a negative 6. Multiply by negative 5 to get a 30. Add vertically, and you'll have your remainder. You started with a quadratic. You're going to end with a linear 2x minus 6. And then that remainder gets written over what you were dividing by, the factor of x plus 5. That goes to 0. x27 over x plus 5 goes to 0 as x gets large. Your function will behave like the line y equals 2x minus 6. That is your slant asymptote. All right, we put it all together now. We know the asymptotes. Um, to get the rest, we're going to need some calculus to know where that min is at and where that max is, max is at. But um, I just want you to be able to understand how asymptotes work. There's a little bit of calculus in the mix when we look at horizontal asymptotes, but the algebra is what's behind the scenes with the vertical and the slant asymptotes. Thanks for watching. My name is Nakai Rimmer. In our next video, we're going to dig into some examples of curve sketching. Um, maybe we'll do one example per video if they get to be too long, but I'm here to ha I'm happy to help you through this journey. Um, please like and subscribe, comment down below. Uh, let me know if you want to uh, see other videos or you want to see uh, different uh, examples. Uh, be happy to help. Uh, I'm doing this for my students, but maybe it can help anyone who's watching. All right. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.